Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 2 of creating a space shooter with Godot. So I'm creating a new project here. I'm just naming it yet another space shooter because there's so many of them out there, but they're so fun to program and make anyways. And I'm putting it in a new uh, folder on my computer. And for the renderer, I have OpenGL 2 selected. Basically, we're not making a graphically intense game, and I also want my game to be able to work on some older phones and for the web browser. And for your game to run on older hardware and in the web browser, OpenGL 2 is recommended. So that's what I'm selecting there. And I'll go ahead and create the project. So once you've created your project, you should see a window similar to this. On the left hand side in our scene tree, we're going to go ahead and create a new 2D scene. This is going to create a new scene with a node 2D node as the root node. We're going to make this scene the main scene of our game. Essentially, the first thing that runs when our game starts up. So I'm going to rename this node here by double clicking and I'm going to rename it to Gameplay and then we can go ahead and save this scene because right now it is unsaved. So I'll go up to File, Save Scene and I like to organize everything in my Resources folder here in separate folders. So I'm going to create a new folder here called Main Scenes and this is where we're going to save our gameplay scene and maybe our main menu scene, stuff like that in the future. And I'll click Save. You'll notice in the file system we have that new folder, Main Scenes, with our gameplay scene saved right there. Okay, the next step is we need to get some graphics into our file system so that we can draw stuff to the screen. So to do that, I'm going to right click on my resources folder in the file system and create another new folder and I'm going to name this textures. This is where I'm going to put all the images for my game. Now you can either drag all of your art files into this folder here or you can just use the normal file system on your computer and go into your project folder here and we can see that textures folder that we just made so we'll go into that, and you're going to want to put all of your artwork in here. Now, the artwork I am using is not my own, but all of it is under the CC0 license, which basically means anyone can use it for pretty much any reason. So if you have your own art, you can go ahead and you can put that artwork into here, or if you just want to follow along, you can get this artwork in the project with the link down in the description. Now we can open up Godot again, and once you click on the Godot window, it'll load a little bit, and we'll see that we have all of our uh, updated images in our textures folder here. So there's all of my images. So just as a test, let's draw something to the screen here. So under my gameplay node, I'm going to right click and select add child node, and I'm going to add a sprite node. A sprite is just how you can draw an image to the screen. If you click on that sprite node, you'll see it has a texture property over here. And we can simply drag any of our images into that texture property. For example, I can drag my enemy ship image into this texture, and we'll see my enemy ship right there in the center of our scene. Let's just save this scene and click the run button at the top right. Now since we haven't run our game before, we have to select which scene is going to run first when you start your game. So I'll click select here and I'm going to choose that gameplay scene that we saved in that main scenes folder. And this will run your game with that scene. So you'll notice that our image is kind of drawn. It's centered at the top left of the window so we can only see part of it but we know that our game is working. Now we have to decide on a window size for our game. What size do we want the game to be? So to do that, we're going to go up to the Project tab, go to Project Settings, and then under the General menu, we can scroll down to where we see Display and click Window. Here we can specify the width and height of our window in pixels. You can choose any size that you want. I'm going to go for 450 pixels wide by 600 pixels tall. So if you set those two values, and we click close, when we rerun our game, you're going to see the window is much different. It's sized as we specified. It's 450 pixels wide and 600 pixels tall. Now, we have to make sure that our game is going to resize properly. And this isn't super straightforward, so let's just play around with the settings here. I'm going to click my sprite, and I'm going to drag him sort of into the middle of my screen. You'll notice in our screen here, if I zoom out, there's this blue box that has appeared, and this represents the size of your window here. So I just moved my enemy ship sprite into the middle of the window. And if we run the game, we should now see the enemy in the middle of the window here. But if I try to resize my window, like if I make it wider, it doesn't move and nothing resizes and nothing changes position. I can just shrink the window past it. So we want to make sure that we keep the same size of our game even if we ex expand the window and change its size. So to do that, we'll go to the project menu and we'll go back to our project settings. And we're going to scroll down until we see 
this stretch category. Currently, the stretch mode is disabled, which is why nothing was moving or scaling on the screen. So if we change this to 2D mode instead, and we close our project, and we try running it again, let's see what changed. Well, something definitely changed. It's actually keeping the same size of our game so we can still see everything. It's just it has to squish it a lot in order for it to fit on the window based on how much we resize it. So we're almost there, but that's not quite what we want. I don't want my images to be squished like that if you're playing on a small phone or a small screen. So we can go to the project settings again, and we'll keep the stretch mode to 2D, but we can change this aspect setting. This is basically saying how you want to keep the aspect ratio of your game. We ignored it, meaning it's just going to try to resize it however it wants, and that's why we got all that stretching. But if we switch this to keep, and we click close, this will actually keep the aspect ratio of our game when it resizes. So if I make the window larger, you'll see that these black bars appear, but our game doesn't stretch at all. And if I make the game smaller, it'll resize properly without stretching or pulling all the images. And this is exactly what we're going to want, because when we have a phone screen that's small, we want it to still be able to fit properly, but show the right amount of objects on our screen. Same thing for if we make the window extremely big, we want the game to resize appropriately, to be as big as it can without stretching stuff. Okay, so that's our window setup. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete my sprite here, because we don't need that anymore, and we are ready to begin making our game.